welcome to my final play. I'm Brian. I'm here with uh, former Super Bowl champion, um, fullback Henry Hynoski. Henry, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yep, I really appreciate you um, open me, opening up your home and inviting me in to, to sit down. So thank you for that. Hey, any friend of Big Mayor is a friend of mine. So. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. So um, what we're going to sit down and talk through today um, is just going to be the sport of football. Um, and then you know, you playing at the elite level in the NFL and just kind of the story of, of how you got there. So yeah, go ahead and uh, start it off with, you know, when when did you get introduced to the sport of football? Uh, I was kind of born into it, actually. Um, my dad played pro football for the Cleveland Browns in, in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. um, with Philadelphia Eagles for a little bit. Um, local legend yeah. in, in Pennsylvania, uh, played high school at Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was growing up, I always just, like we go into town, the uh, Italian restaurant in, in Mount Carmel, you know, walking down the street, everybody would just stop my dad and just start talking about the glory days and how much he meant to them and how much he inspired them and how much people looked up to him around the area. And I grew up seeing this and you know, it just got me into football from from an early age. Mm -hmm. You know, my earliest memories are running around the living room, throwing a football around with my dad, going to local high school games, and you know, they they throw footballs up in the stands, and you know, we'd uh, you know spend after the game an hour on the field after the game kicking field goals, things like that. Yeah. So ever since my earliest memories, it was just all about football. It was a sport that I just instantly fell in love with, and you know, I wanted to uh, want to play at the earliest stage possible. And, in our area, you can start. Uh, when I was when I was growing up, you can start playing uh, with pads, live contact football at uh, eight years old. Okay. So that time came around, and my dad wouldn't let me play. And you know, my parents didn't push football on me by any means. They actually preferred that I didn't necessarily play football. You know, my mom was all about academics, and you know, my dad, you know, was, you know, wanted me once to introduce me to baseball and basketball and all the other sports too. And um, so he made a deal with me that he will let me play in seventh grade if I still was that into it at that point. Yeah. So finally I kept begging him and begging him and begging him, you know, five years or so go by. And he, then my parents finally decided to let me go out for football in fifth grade. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just because I kept, kept bugging him about it and it was just something I had a knack for. You know, I just, I just had a love for the game and, you know, something I was natural at and, you know, just came from... You know, the, the town, I guess, came from a uh, family lineage of successful athletes. Right. So it was definitely something that, you know, being that you, you grew up in it and you looked up to it, uh, it was no question when it came time that you were going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, you know, I, I remember being, you know, maybe five, six years old and telling my parents I'm going to be in the NFL just like my dad. And that yeah. was, you know, my mindset from, from that point on. Um, now, as far as the, the high school program that you played for, um, you know, there's some, like you said, the, the lineage, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely traditions with that. Mm -hmm. um, how much of an impact do you think that had on, you know, advancing through, through the career? Well, when I was, uh, when I was in high school, uh, well, when I was in, uh, probably, yeah, when I was six years old, the high school I was attending, the school district, they won their first state championship in 1994 yeah. in Southern Columbia. And... Um, so the tr tradition was there, just getting started, you know, a lot of momentum building around that school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, local powerhouse up at that up to that point was Mount Carmel, where my dad went. Right. So I think everybody in the area kind of expected me to, you know, I was going to be the next Mount Carmel football star, you know, the, the uh, next Red Tornado fullback. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wanted to, but, you know, obviously I wanted to stay, put where my friends were and, you know, where my family's home was and everything. So, um you know, having seen Southern have success in making more state championships over that time period, um, you know, they won their second state title the year before I started. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, my four years, we won, won state championships all four years. And now you see where they're at now. Um, yeah. You know, every year they seem to win a state championship. So um, I attribute the success of that program um, to my own personal success. Um, you know, the structure and discipline that Coach Roth, um, you know, put display on an everyday consistent basis, 
is that of what a college or professional coach would do. So that's right. where, you know, prepared me for the next level. Yep. Um, and then after the high school level, then uh, playing at the next level was, mm -hmm. was the University of Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, what did that recruiting process look like? Uh, it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, I fell in kind of like a, a weird area. Um, I was... I was a fullback in the wing T offense at Southern, so I mean I was the main ball carrier. Right. You know, I ran for, you know, I was two hundred and forty five pounds as a senior in high school. I ran, for, I think I finished third or fourth in the state all time in rushing. Mm -hmm. You know, several two thousand yard seasons and you know over seven thousand yards in my career, well over a hundred touchdowns. So I wasn't actually being recruited as a running back. I was right. being recruited as a either a fullback or a linebacker, and you know a lot of schools would say, you know, they kind of, when they're recruiting, they'll kind of blow smoke up and say, well, yeah, he'll get, you know, 20, 25 carries a game, you right. know, we're going to feed you to the rock, you know, I, I knew where my future was at to get to the next level, mm -hmm. and I knew it would be the true fullback position, um, and Coach Wanstead at the University of Pittsburgh, who was the head coach at that time, and, you know, the other coaches and recruiters, you know, they were point blank with me, and they said, yeah, I mean, you're going to get the ball, they said, but you're going to do your fair share of blocking and they said and that's what's going to get you to the next level that's that's your ticket to get to the to the pros and they said, that's where I, you, I know you eventually want to go so um you know just their honesty and integrity um you know the tradition of the program and my relationship with the coaches really made it a, a no-brainer at the end of the day mm -hmm. um i wanted to stay relatively close to home because my parents they never missed a, a game ever in my career yeah. so you know i wanted them to be able to you know, I'm not having to travel the West Coast or the Midwest or, right. you know, down South every week because every game will be an away game, basically. But, you know, so I chose Pittsburgh and it ended up, uh, you know, really being, uh, you know, one of the best choices of my life. So it led me to where I'm at today. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, though, like you said, your mom was really big on academics mm -hmm. um, and you did stay and finish your academic career as well. Yeah. I, you know, graduated cum laude. Um, uh, deans, uh, you know, made the dean's list every year. Yeah. Um, Two-time Big East uh, uh, academic uh, Big East performer. Mm -hmm. So my mom always stayed on me with that. Trust me. But you know, <laughs> if I brought home a B from you know in high school on, I, I heard about it. So <laughs> yeah, not unfortunately, I was able to keep straight A's. Um, but I'm so glad I did though, because it's opening up a lot of doors and opportunities for me post football. Right. You know, due to my uh, dedication and my studies. Absolutely, um, and that definitely speaks a lot. I mean, I don't know that I could ever think of uh, another player that had graduated at the top of their class um, in the academics as well as performing the sports as well. So. Well, that credit goes to my mom. So. <laughs> well. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot to do with that and uh, what you've learned through the sport as well. So, um, so as far as uh, you know, the four years at Pitt, uh, and then the draft comes, and you ended up going undrafted, but you knew it wouldn't stop there. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a you know an interesting process. I had by my time, my first couple of years, I redshirted my first year at Pitt. Mm -hmm. um, next year, played a little bit. Finally, I come in as a full time starter my third year, mm -hmm. my redshirt sophomore year, and. All of a sudden, just you know, started you know hitting guys hard and knocking them down, <laughs> and I was getting a lot of attention for you know making plays athletically from the fullback spot. Um, before you know it, there was a lot of hype around around me and Pittsburgh and, and my position, and you know all the all these so-called experts at that time were labeling me as the top fullback in the country. Mm -hmm. um, then the next year, you know, same thing. My my redshirt junior year, my fourth year, and uh, we. Actually, just got done winning the Big East Championship, sharing the Big East Championship title. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, the head coach, Coach Wanstead, uh, got fired. And mm -hmm. so we had a whole coaching change, a whole coaching transition. And who the next coach they brought in didn't utilize the fullback position. So, right. you know, he had sat down and talked with me, you know, maybe we'll play at tight end, linebacker, but he wanted me to stay. And I already graduated at that point, so it just made sense for me to go to the NFL. Right. Um, you know, really because they didn't. It was tough leaving my friends, and my teammates, but they didn't really have a fullback position on you know in the offense that they ran. Uh, so I made the choice to uh, to enter the draft, started training. Um, you know, was invited to the combine. You know, I was predicted, projected to go anywhere. 
you know, as early as the end of the third round on, you know, most likely four of the fall rounds, like, you know, four to five, somewhere in there where, tip, where full backs typically go. Right. Um, so at the combine, I'm around my first 40 yard dash, and it felt like a dog just jumped up and bit me. Oh, and yeah, so I, I ripped my hamstring, and, uh, you know, you could see me kind of coast to like my momentum slowed down. I pull up at like the 20 yard line, and then I limp off and, and grab my hamstring. So I had to rehab that. So I was never able to do the combine. Um, wasn't able to do my local pro day at Pittsburgh with the rest of my teammates. Um, so I was really kind of labeled as a question mark with, with my injuries. So um, it ultimately led me to be undrafted. Mm -hmm. So I went from being the top fullback prospect in the draft to watching, watching the draft and seeing, you know, f five, six other fullbacks, their names getting called before mine. So it was really disheartening. Yeah. Um, you know, I felt bad for myself for a couple of days, and you know, but then I just used it as motivation because I knew I would get my chance. But you know, the way the drafts work now, free agents usually sign as soon as the draft is over and it's right. done. That was the year of the lockout because of the CBA and, <laughs> and owners' uh, disagreement. So I had to wait months until free agency opened, mm -hmm. and I was actually up training with Babe. Um, so I was, you know, doing my doing my workouts, training, getting in shape. Just motivated me more and more, and then I'm up that baby's working out, and it says I got a call from my agent and said lockout ended. So so I babe I gotta go. So it wasn't on, I was on my way home, um, when my mom was actually my mom or dad was actually with me. Call started coming in, and I'd answer them on on the, on the way home, and it was just a long process throughout the day and the night. And the New York Giants were the first team that called and. It was about probably 10 or 11 a.m. And I finally, you know, went through the process, heard from about like 18 different teams. And, uh, you know, about 11 o'clock at night, called the Giants, gave them my commitment, and then flew out the next day and was there. And oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I definitely um, I didn't even think about the lockout at that time. So that process is, like you said, definitely different from, you know, today and yeah. not having that lockout. So um, the it patience. Test, really tested your patience and, uh, and really tested how bad you wanted. But, yeah, you know. absolutely. I'm sure that your nerves were um, definitely on on edge mm -hmm. that whole time. So, uh, but you did make the make the roster. Then you got the mm -hmm. contract, uh, and you spent a good amount of time with them. Yeah. Um, you know, and with the New York Giants, and you were there from 2011 to the end of 2014. Oh, to, well, the beginning of 2015. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and. In that time period, uh, like what we said in the introduction, uh, Super Bowl champion. Yeah, first um, year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I have a picture here, um, and I'll show it to the camera. Yeah. Um, this was after the game. Um, you went over to the end zone, and you threw your hands up in the air. So, yeah. you know, with, with looking at this picture, um, what's the emotion that's going through your head in this time? The whole process was a whirlwind um, from going undrafted, you know, with the injury to mm -hmm. signing with the Giants, you know, just getting a shot. And then, you know, by our, by our third preseason game, they tell me I'm the starter. Yeah. Next thing you know, we play in the first game where as a starter, we're winning games. Um, you know, I'm, I'm starting the whole time. I had a, had a shoulder injury. I uh, had to miss a couple of games in the middle of the season because of that. Mm -hmm. um, we're win you know, winning games. I finally got healthy again. Next thing you know, we're in the playoffs, keep winning the playoffs. Next thing you know, we're in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And it just happened like that because I just got a call, said, okay, I'm coming <laughs> to New York. And then next thing is like a couple months later, we're in the Super Bowl, just like that. Yeah. And um, the crazy thing about that picture was everything came full circle because we the field that we won the Super Bowl on was the same field that I ripped my hamstring on at the combine. Oh, that's right. And, yeah, it was uh, in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, yeah. And... Uh, you know where I th where I thought all my dreams were falling apart. Everything came true. You know, less uh, less than a year later. So it just goes to show you, you know, the story of you know resilience and perseverance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that picture definitely shows it all. With the you know your arms up, your the war cry almost. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know whether to scream, cry. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know. It was just like ten different types of emotions hit you all at one time. Yeah, unreal. So. Um, you know, as far as then your your final play, mm -hmm. um, your final play happened, uh, and I'll let you go from there as far as what that looked like. Yeah, I mean, it it was uh, it wasn't memorable for me. My final play. The crazy thing was, I had a, a 
couple months before, I had just got done signing a new two-year contract. Mm -hmm. um, you know, expecting to be in New York for two more years, and I played in our last preseason game up in up in New England. Uh, I don't remember the final play. I don't, I don't remember any of it because I was expecting to play two more years after that. So yeah. it just, uh, you know, there, it wasn't like I said, okay, you know, this is my last game and I'm, I'm going to be done. Um, it was it was kind of uh, kind of a surprise, and yeah. you know, after that game, I was on my way back to uh, to a wet uh, back home to Pennsylvania to one of my uh, best friend's weddings, mm -hmm. and uh, my wife, uh, who was my fiance at the time, were traveling back home, and I see a New York number pop up on my phone. I'm like, well, who's this? So I answer it, and they ask me to come back to the facility. I'm like, wait a second. I was like. That's not good. <laughs> so I was like, you, you always hear about the, you know, getting the call when, uh, when you're getting released. So we go back there, and um, you know, they just kind of said the offense is really going in another another direction. They thought that the fullback position was gonna, you know, be a bigger part of the offense. But you know, it's just you know, with the new with the new offensive coordinator that was in, mm -hmm. fullback's not a major part of the offense anymore. So they can use somebody in another position to play the, you know, four or five snaps a game right. uh, in order to save a roster spot. And, you know, I was, you know, to save money too because I was you know, more expensive than another guy at that point also mm -hmm. um, just because um, the amount of years I've been there in my contract and everything. So it was kind of, uh, you know, a unique situation, but you know, I was shocked. Um, you know, I didn't expect it to end that way, but... But it did, and I have no complaints because it got me to where I'm at today. And you know, without me being in New York, I would have never won a Super Bowl. I would have never met my wife, and I would never have uh, had my son. Yeah. And that's the most important thing in my life right now. And you know, the opportunities that football afforded me um, got me got me to where I'm at. And I'm, I'm happier than I could ever be. Yeah, that's unreal, though. The uh, it's great to hear the perspective that you have uh, because. You know, so many of us can look at the the negative of that, but to just have that, you know, so much to be thankful for. Yeah, and um, we we left. I left it on on great terms with the Giants too. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was kind of like a sad day at the office. You know, all the you know executives and front office people. You know, they were, you know, told me how much I I meant to the program, and um, the owner, you know, said if you know when I when I'm figure out what I'm doing, you know, if I want to come back and be a part of the organization in another capacity, mm -hmm. I could do that. So I actually ended up working for the Giants for, for two years, yeah. um, you know, doing public relations stuff and scouting and pro personnel stuff. But my wife and I, we knew we were going to start a family soon. It was our ultimate goal to come back home to central Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and, uh, and raise, uh, raise our family here. So yeah, you know, it worked out. Awesome. And that's definitely good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as, um, you know, with that transition, like you talked about, um, everything to be thankful for, um, what is it that you are doing now then? I am uh, a high school administrator right now and a head football coach uh, at Shemokin Area High School. So I'm just completing my first year as an administrator and had my first season uh, as a head coach and made the playoffs, had a winning season. So just looking to continue to build on the uh, – you know, a, a new culture, mm -hmm. you know, starting a new tradition, um, you know, just create a winning program again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, while, while my job as administrator, you know, impacting uh, the lives of young men and, uh, and young students, you know, just to make them, you know, get them on the right path in life, you know, yeah. be an impact of them, uh, on them positively as much as I can. So that's, um, yeah, that's really what I enjoy doing now, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, making an impact in the future. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, you know, the, the patience and the perseverance has definitely come full circle for you, uh, and that's great to see. So, um, the last question then would be, you know, what would you say would be the number one thing that the sport of football has taught you throughout your life? I would say, that we, as we talk about discipline and uh, perseverance and uh, team above self. Yeah. You, know, you can um, can't get anywhere in life without hard work and dedication. I know it, it might be uh, sound a little cliche, but it's it's the truth. I mean, I busted my butt to get where I'm at. Yeah. And um, the other big thing too. I mean, I saw, you know, ultimate success. You know, at a Super Bowl level because it was a bunch of unselfish players that wanted the genuine best for their team rather than themselves. Yeah. And that resulted in. Uh, 
you know, in the culmination of the Super Bowl. So that's, you know, that's really one of the great things that taught me, just, you know, team, team and others above self. Yeah. And then you get rewarded in the end. Awesome. Well, um, I definitely appreciate the time, like I said. Uh, I hope you also enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe. And remember, whatever it is that you do today, approach it with the mindset of, is this my final play? Thanks again.